Hey everyone, and welcome. Today we're diving deep into the world of Roman architecture, a world of grand temples, colossal amphitheaters, and ingenious engineering that shaped not just their empire, but architecture for centuries to come. Forget togas and gladiators for a bit. We're talking concrete arches and some seriously impressive construction skills. So where do we begin? Well, the Roman story is a long one and their architecture evolved with their empire. Let's break it down period by period to see how things changed. First Roman Republic period, Temple of Jupiter, Optimus Maximus, one of the earliest and most important temples in Rome, located on the Capitoline Hill. It was built in the traditional Etruscan style with a deep porch and three cellas for the Capitoline Triad, Jupiter, Juno, and Minerva. Temple of Portunus circa 100 BCE, a well-preserved example of a small Roman temple in the Forum Borium. It features a blend of Greek and Etruscan architectural elements with ionic columns and a high podium. Basilicas, public buildings used for administrative and legal functions began to appear. Examples include the Basilica Aemilia and Basilica Julia in the Roman Forum. Second Late Republic. Theater of Pompey, the first permanent stone theater in Rome, built by Pompey the Great. It included a large garden and a temple dedicated to Venus Victrix. Forum of Caesar. Commissioned by Julius Caesar, it expanded the Roman Forum and featured the Temple of Venus Genetrix, reflecting Caesar's claim of divine ancestry. Aqueducts. Structures like the Aqua Apia and Aqua Martia were built to supply Rome with fresh water, showcasing early Roman engineering skills. Three, early Roman Empire. Augustan architecture, Emperor Augustus transformed Rome's with grand structures, Arapasus, an altar of peace, richly decorated with reliefs depicting processions and mythological scenes. Mausoleum of Augustus, a monumental tomb for the first Roman emperor, inspired by Etruscan and Hellenistic designs. The Pantheon, the original Pantheon, was built by Marcus Agrippa, but was later reconstructed under Hadrian. Colosseum, commissioned by Emperor Vespasian and completed under Titus, this massive amphitheater could hold up to 50,000 spectators. It featured an intricate system of vaults and a retractable awning for shade. Domus Aurea, a lavish palace complex built by Emperor Nero after the Great Fire of Rome, with opulent frescoes and a large artificial lake. 4. High Roman Empire Trajan's Forum and Market, a grand complex designed by Apollodorus of Damascus. The Column of Trajan, decorated with a spiraling relief, celebrated Trajan's victories in the Dacian Wars. Hadrian's Villa a vast estate near Tivoli, featuring an array of architectural styles, including Greek, Egyptian, and Roman, showcasing Hadrian's love for diverse cultures. Pantheon, rebuilt by Emperor Hadrian. The Pantheon is a marvel of engineering, with a massive unreinforced concrete dome and an oculus that provides natural light. Temple of Venus and Roma, designed by Hadrian, this was one of the largest temples in Rome dedicated to Venus Felix and Roma Eterna. Five, late Roman Empire. Baths of Caracalla, one of the largest and most luxurious bath complexes in ancient Rome, featuring hot and cold baths, a gymnasium, and libraries, all adorned with marble and mosaics. Aurelian walls, massive defensive walls built by Emperor Aurelian to protect Rome from external threats enclosing a much larger area than the earlier Servian walls. Diocletian's Palace, located in modern-day Split, Croatia, this massive complex was a retirement palace for Emperor Diocletian, blending fortification and luxurious living quarters. Basilica of Maxentius and Constantine, the largest building in the Roman Forum, featuring massive vaulted spaces and a colossal statue of Constantine. Six, Christian architecture. Old St. Peter's Basilica, commissioned by Emperor Constantine, this was one of the earliest and most important Christian basilicas in Rome, built over the burial site of St. Peter. Church of the Holy Sepulchre, constructed in Jerusalem by order of Constantine, marking the traditional site of Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection. 
Santa Costanza, a circular mausoleum built for Constantine's daughter, featuring a central dome and early Christian mosaics. Arch of Constantine, a triumphal arch celebrating Constantine's victory at the Battle of Milvian Bridge, incorporating spolia, reused sculptures from earlier monuments. Key architectural innovations and features. Concrete. The use of concrete allowed Romans to build massive and durable structures, such as the Pantheon's dome. Arches and vaults. Mastery of the arch led to the development of aqueducts, bridges, and monumental buildings like the Colosseum. Domes. The Pantheon's dome remains one of the greatest engineering achievements of antiquity. Urban planning, Roman cities were planned with a grid layout, featuring a forum, bathhouses, amphitheaters, and aqueducts. Roads and bridges. The extensive network of Roman roads and bridges facilitated trade and communication across the empire. Roman architecture continued to influence later architectural styles, including Byzantine, Romanesque, and Renaissance architecture, leaving a lasting legacy that is evident in countless buildings and monuments around the world today. And that's a wrap on our whirlwind tour of Roman architecture. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments which Roman structure is your favorite, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more architecture adventures.